Hello, I'm Sam Lesson. I'm one of the co-founders of Finn, and in this segment, I'm going to walk through examples of just some of the insights that Finn Analytics can tell you about your operations team out of the box using example data. This is just a sampling, but hopefully it'll help with some context. There are three ways we think about data at a high level. There is overall engagement and productivity at a team level, there is individual performance, and there are insights on cases, workflows, applications, and specific documents. Every team is different in what they care about, but overall we want to demonstrate with these examples a sampling of the types of analytical insights that we can provide that are harder and possible to get without our tools, the types of specific recommendations we can offer for managing your process and team, and the types of specific recommendations we can offer to help coach individuals. Let's start with overall team engagement and productivity. For this example team, we see the team members have been observed on average for 40 hours a week over the sample period. Observed time did drop some for a bit, but rebounded in the last week. Of the time observed, 50% has been active time, representing around 20 hours a week of active engagement by the team, and 30% of the observed time has been spent on core workflows. Overall, the trend is that after a few week dip, it looks like last week was a strong one for engagement. There is always a waterfall of time observed to active to active and core workflows, and we can help you benchmark this versus your industry. Another question people tend to ask to understand is where their team's active time is going by tool or app. In this team, 70% of active time is going to the team's core tools, Shopify and Zendesk, which is good. 17% of time is going into Slack, Google Docs, and Gmail. As a percentage of total online time, 45% of time is going into Zendesk, and it's recently increased. Generally, more time spent in a primary CRM is better, so this is a nice improvement. When we look at the percentage of time spent in other key tools, a few things become clear. Shopify time has been declining. We'll get back to that in a second, but this is likely a good complement to the increasing time in Zendesk. Slack time has increased, but is now declining. Different teams have different targets on how much time they think team members should be using communication tools like Slack, but too much of the day spent in Slack can obviously be bad. Google Docs use is very inconsistent for this team. This is likely an opportunity because many teams use Google Docs for semi-documented standard operating procedures, or SOPs, that should be moved into their CRM for efficiency. Not all active time is the same, of course. There is production and consumption. Production time is when the team members are typing, where consumption is more when they're researching or learning, identified by scrolling behaviors. In this case of our demo team, 70% of production effort in the last week went into Zendesk where Shopify represents 50% of consumption time or research time. This is why in our prior example, the declining time in Shopify is likely good. It's more of a consumption versus an output interface. Watching these trends over time tells you a lot about how much time teams are investing in output-oriented work versus needing to learn or research, and tells you something about how tools and tool understanding is changing at the team level over time. If that was a very quick taste of some of the team engagement context Finn can provide, let's also look at some of the ways we can help you think about individual performance of team members. One way you can compare individual people is on where they're spending their observed time. Understanding each team member's active time and active time on different resources gives you a lot of insight into their relative engagement. Here we see a sample of agents. Some are active 35 to 40 hours a week, but you can see the percentage of time they're active on core workflows and services is quite different. Bobby E, for instance, is active less time than others, but active on core flows, about the same. Also, when you look at the composition of core workflow time, there's a pretty large variance between how much time agents are spending in Zendesk versus Shopify. Several recommendations can come out of this, like training Ollie G on Shopify, since he seems to need to spend a lot of his active time on it. It's also useful to look at the long tail of services used. In our example team, 32% of the organization's time is spent on long tail of minor team resources, and 1.2% of time is spent on resources that are only used by a single agent. Some team members are using long tail resources more than others, and certain tail resources like Google Docs and Slack are actually used a lot. Again, it's hard to say a priori for all teams if this is good or not, but it is the type of context that's important to compare agent workflows and have an opinion about. I've mentioned a few times that with many of these metrics, different organizations target different expectations. One thing that's a useful tool regarding your goals is understanding how team members' behavior is changing over time. I've mentioned a few times that with many of these metrics, different organizations target different expectations. One thing that's a useful tool regardless of your goals is to understand how team members' behavior is changing over time. 
Here we have an example of a simple time series looking at the engagement of a set of team members weekly for a few weeks. You can see team members like Susie D are constantly outperforming the average. And you can also see that team members like Sandy H's engagement has declined markedly over time. We also have here a time series on the percentage of active time spent on core domains, which tells a story in the example case of a slight decline overall with a few clear outliers. We've been looking a lot at time and engagement statistics, but Finn also opens up a world of analyzing activity by case. We identify cases automatically across most major CRMs. In this data, we see the distribution of how many cases were completed, time spent per case, and the percentage of cases resolved in one session, and first contact resolution. The data tells the story of Jamie B as an agent who's moving quickly through many tasks, but resolving few in a single session. Sandy H is a very strong performer, but isn't doing as many cases as you might expect given her overall speed and FCR. She might be bored. It might make sense to pair Bobby and Allie with Sandy to address some of the stumbling blocks and uh, help Sandy grow. Key press behaviors can give you a lot of data about where easy wins are for coaching and workflow refinement. This entire example team, with one exception, outperforms our benchmark in terms of the percentage of active time spent typing, engaged in production. But there are still opportunities to look at. For instance, Ali G shows up spending 55% of his active time scrolling and his backspace race is very high. The scrolling behavior suggests he's spending a lot more time than his peers researching or lost. Diving deeper on typing speeds and behaviors, a few things are clear from this example team. First, only one agent knows how to use modifier keys on actions like delete. Knowing advanced keyboard functions like that makes agents faster and more engaged. So it's worth teaching the rest of the team and following up. At P50, four team members are faster than typing speed benchmark and two are slower. Those two are slower at P90 and P95 meaning they might benefit from some typing lessons. Sandy H is an interesting case, is capable of typing very fast, but at the P50 is relatively slower. Again, a couple of what we know about her backspace behavior, she seems to be second guessing herself a lot or just under engaged. Finally in this section, a note on machines. One thing we found is team members can be limited by the speed of their computers. When you see memory used at really high rates and machines that agents are using having less memory than other teammates, like Jamie B in this case, it might be time to upgrade. When agents have too many windows open, it's also a sign that their workflow could be improved since toggling between many windows is inefficient. Here we see Ollie G has 40 plus windows open at P50. It's worth a discussion. The last thing I'll briefly review are some process and case oriented insights. Many of these insights have coaching implications, but can also be particularly helpful for hunting down opportunities to improve tools and implement things like RPA. First, let's look at performance on a specific workflow. In this situation, we're looking at cases tagged account settings, for example, team. There's a lot of variance in handle time uh, if we look at the P80. We can see that it took Dave about 50 minutes to resolve 80% of his cases the week of May 13th versus Bikal at 15. However, Bikal has gotten slower over the last month where Dave has actually improved. In this case, we see a specific refund tag case that Jenny G spent 150 minutes resolving, which is 10x longer than the expectations for the workflow. Our tools make it easy to visualize distributions like this and then review video of the incident live. Where is your team stalled can be measured by things like idle time or a high ratio of mouse movement to typing or high backspace counts. In this situation, we can see cases tagged order are popping really high in terms of the stall rate, and we should probably address that. Keystroke counts and keystroke variants are good metrics for understanding where canned responses are being used versus manual typing. The coupon workflow is associated with a lot of rethinking backspacing, while subscriptions tag workflows have the same pattern of key activity, high counts, low variance. Subscription actually might be a very good candidate for automation based on these facts. Here we see an insight about task paths. Every time an agent exits the page app.iterable, they go to democo slash orders. This suggests that you need to change how the tools are integrated or even automate the steps since it clearly needs to happen the same way all the time. When patterns are more the same in work, that operations agents are doing, then you should look to tool refinement or automation. When it's more different, then coaching is the key to improvement. There's a lot more depth we can go into, especially around examining workflows at the case level. This is a very cursory read at best. But for now, we'll pause here, and hopefully this gives you at least a sense of the type of richness of data that Fin Analytics alone can provide about your operations team. You can learn more at fin.com, and feel free to reach out to me personally or my co-founder, Cortina.